Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse Podcast, a podcast that supports local by wearing gold chains on our necks and titabuns on our heads. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and we're here at the Summit Media Radio Station in downtown Honolulu, as always, ready to bring you guys another great episode. Before we introduce our guests, I want to say a huge mahalo to our new Patreon supporters, Kathleen Montemayor, Rebecca Taylor, William Iglesias, Ray Sinsei, Patty Ponimoy, and Markian Benamu. If you want to join them and be a part of our Hawaii vs. Ohana and help us fund this podcast so Jordan can finally feed me, please check out our Patreon. All right, let's introduce our guest. Our guest today is an absolute boss lady from the island of Oahu. She is the owner and designer of Ocean Creations, a handcrafted jewelry brand specializing in trendy and unique designs that empower women to be their best selves in every way, from career to personal growth. This impressive young entrepreneur is making big moves and already has two store locations on Oahu, one at the Kamakana Ali'i Shopping Center and a brand new location in the Ala Moana Shopping Center. She can make you a beautiful piece of jewelry or kick your butt because she is also a black belt in ta- Taekwondo. So don't even think about stealing anything from her. She's the original OC baddie. Her name is Haley Talent. Hello, Haley. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> You're welcome. Did I say your last name correctly? Talit. Talit. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure if Talit, Talit, Talit. Okay. Awesome. Also, great seeing you. Do you like my necklace? I love it. I can't believe you still have it. It looks so good on you. <laughs> I like that it's an H. <laughs> H. H for Haley. H for Hawaii verse. For Hama hybrid. Hawaii. What else? H for um. So many, you so many the things. Main ones. <laughs> the main ones. Yeah, mahalo. We we filmed at your location at the Kamakanali Shopping Center with Hawaii Verse. That video still hasn't come out yet, um, but stay tuned. It's gonna I, it's yeah, gonna be a, a good one. A good one. Yeah, and uh, mahalo so much for gifting me this my first ever gold chain. <laughs> yeah, I, I I just I'm waiting for my lifted Yoda to to come in. You know, <laughs> to complete the package. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what what do you think is the equivalent of driving a lifted Yoda and wearing a gold chain? For females, you know, so oh guys, that's like the, the stereotypical, you know, male. What is it? What is it for girls? <laughs> okay, I want to say it's like a Louis Vuitton purse. Mm. It's probably like the equivalent to the gold chain. Yeah. Okay. Would you say like I? Well, well, say I. I would say like cost wise, maybe, but I'm saying more like the local brother okay. versus the local sister. Like mm. you know, the sunglasses, lifted Yoda, gold chain, Got it. fluorescent okay. T-shirt. Okay, definitely like your heirloom bracelets. Mm-hmm. The, your the bangles, Hawaiian, yeah, yeah, your yeah. Hawaiian bracelets, and then like truck wise, maybe the Forerunner or something. Oh, okay, I don't okay. Know, like, some some sort of SUV. Yes, yeah, yeah. like an SUV, like yeah. a something you can have your kids in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's probably yeah I similar. Wouldn't. Yeah. Okay, well, we have a lot to get into, and we need to learn about your black belt, too, because oh I had no idea you were a black belt. Yeah, I, I don't even so know how you knew that. I, I do my research. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll talk about that. But first, I got to know where you're from, where you grad, and what was it like growing up? Okay, so I'm from Kaneohe, born and raised on Oahu, and um, yeah, from the 4-4. <laughs> and I went to Leisure Dan. I graduated from a small school in Kailua. It's a small French school, and just growing up has been just, I don't know how I would say it. Um, it's just been fun. I mean, my high school experience was, I it was, like, really interesting. I'd say, like, it's not, like, most high school experiences. Um, you really had, like, free expression to be yourself. Mm. There wasn't really any cliques or anything like that. Um, it was a small school, so you know everyone's name, you know everyone's family, and... Um, you're just kind of like a little more comfortable than I'd say like when I hear like my other friends talk about their high school experience which is something I always loved and I love school I love learning so I like to feel like comfortable in my learning environment Mm -hmm. and yeah that was high school and that was a all-female school no so it's not no yeah it was good I think a lot of people mix it up with La Pietra oh that's what I think yes exactly you know they're both in Kailua right (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) That's what I was thinking yeah, of. mine's is like on um, Kapa'a Quarry, and it's kind of hidden. It's like, it's like a super low key school. I feel is it like. the one you go up the hill, or is that La Fiatra? No, that's the one you go up the hill. Okay, okay, I, yeah, I think I've been there once for my little cousin's soccer game or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they they do a lot of soccer stuff. Mm, okay, um, cool. But yeah, I went there, and um, it was yeah, it was a good experience. I think like I did feel a little out of place 
I guess I think a lot of like my fi- family like situations were a lot different than most of the kids um, that went there. So I did feel as much as I did feel comfortable in like a social environment, I did feel out of place just with like social class and things like that. Mm. Um, yeah, but overall it was a good experience and I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, well, so what do you mean by that? So uh, it was a private school? Yes, yeah. Okay, so it was a so private school. Most people, you know, they had a lot of money or they come from like a pretty wealthy background. Yeah, I mm. don't want to like assume everyone there did, but yeah. I feel like the, the status quo of it was, you know, you did come from a good, well off family. Mm-hmm. And I think my family, like, they, they, my parents split up when I was really young. And it was kind of always like a back and forth battle. Like, should she go to a private school? Should she not? It was something kind of like argumental just mm. because it was so expensive. And they definitely made so many sacrifices and like put all their eggs in like one basket to like get me to go to this school. It was kind of like a lot of pressure. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So I definitely felt like, you know, growing up, the situations I went through were different than like my classmates at the time. Um, But it's nothing I, like, felt held me back. Mm -hmm. I think it really propelled my business and um, was kind of the edge. I feel like it's the edge I have now Mm -hmm. compared to, like, other people. Yeah, yeah. I can can, can definitely see that. Do you think your experience or you would be where you're at now if you went to a different school? I don't think so. I think, like the being in that school and just in the situation I was in where like my parents had so much expectations on me because they made so many sacrifices Mm -hmm. and even the school helped financially too um there was a time where my mom was just like you're getting you're not going here anymore like this is ridiculous because rent or not rent um tuition increases every year so Mm -hmm. she was just like this is so ridiculous like you're going to a public school like I'm so done with this so I applied I was supposed to go to Kaiser um, they had like a Leisure Dan is a um, international baccalaureate school, mm-hmm. so Kaiser had that program as an mm-hmm. option. I applied, I got in, I went to orientation, everything, and then last minute the high Leisure Dan called and they're like, you know what, we'll like we'll help you pay for part of your school as long as you keep your grades up and stuff like that. Oh, so they really wanted to keep you, huh? I, <laughs> I, I'm grateful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was like so nice of them. And then my parents again like made so many sacrifices. So. It definitely put me in a position where I was already thinking outside of the box of like, I need to make this worth it. Mm. So did they want you to become a doctor, a lawyer, one of those stereotypical jobs that, you know, you feel the pressure to to achieve? They didn't have like a specific like you need to do this, Mm -hmm. but it definitely was like you need to be doing good. Mm. You better not be like acting out in school. You know, it's like really they expected me to like have a good head on my shoulders Mm -hmm. which i never had a problem with i don't Mm -hmm. feel like (laughs) but they definitely it was like and not just my mom and dad it was like my whole family was definitely like there is high expectations Mm -hmm. from you we don't know what it is but yeah do you have any siblings i do i have an older brother okay yeah and did he have a similar experience so he went to castle i think oh (laughs) c-a-s-s-o yeah exactly (laughs) and he was more like i was very studious like really good at school enjoyed going to school he was athletic Mm. and kind of more like um he had like a really big friend group things like that so we were really different Mm. yeah so i went to leisure dan um and yeah there was definitely pressure to make something of myself when it comes in like a career field okay and I think you've you've done that, and you're you know in that process right now, that that uh, phase of your life where you are making something. I mean, you you already have two storefronts at some of the biggest places, shopping centers here on Oahu, which is very impressive. Uh, congrats, first of all. Thank you. Uh, can you talk about that, or, or actually before you talk about it, can you tell us how you got into jewelry making and how did these opportunities come up first? So you graduated from Leisure Dan. Yes. Yeah. And then. So actually jewelry making started in Leisure Dan. So that was kind of like when you asked me, you know, do you think you'd still be where you're at? I don't think so because I started making jewelry because I was there. Mm. And I think like because there was so many like extracurricular opportunities there, there was a lot of travel opportunities um, and just like a really well-rounded school. I wanted to be a part of that. And like all my friends were going, it was like so junk when like, 
they were all going and I was the only one who couldn't go mm. or like weekend getaways, things like that. So um, jewelry really started, me and my mom started jewelry together actually. It was more so her idea. And that started just to get me like, to get some money to be able to go on these like really fun trips or these like educational trips and stuff like that. So that's when it first started. Mm. And it was really just a hobby. You know, I go back and forth between saying it's a hobby <laughs> and like just to travel, but it really was both of those things. Mm. Yeah, when when you do something you love, it doesn't feel like a job, Yeah, right? totally. <laughs> yeah, and first, I, I gotta say, if you're not watching this on YouTube or Spotify, she's decked out in some <laughs> amazing jewelry. So tune in and uh, yeah, yeah, check out, then, check out check her, out her decollete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good work. <laughs> yeah. I'm educated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so it started off as this passion project or just a way necessity just to get make money, right? So you could travel. Yeah, exactly. And what where where did you travel? So there was like um in college, it was a lot of not college, um in high school there was a lot of what you call like um like, inner island, oh, kind of like okay. Maui, Kauai, things like that. Mm. Big Island and then there was like a big Alaska trip we took one of the years and it was like a model United Nations um, kind of like club I was mm. in yeah so I got to do that jewelry definitely helped assist in like those trips and then like converting to college I had like a crazy travel bug I stayed here for college I went to Chaminade and I went to places like Korea Bali Thailand Philippines, um, Japan, where else did I go? Wow. Was this through study abroad or just on your own? Oh, India, China. So some of it was, so like some of it was just on my own, like my Bali trip. I just went with my best friend. Mm. We were 18 years old. Wow. Went for like a month, had no idea what we were doing and have never left the country before. Wow. So that's bold. That was just like random. And then China and India was both a month, a month each. It was a month in China. That was an internship for like a reinsurance company. And then India was like a month of touring different um, manufacturers and like businesses um, in that culture. Oh, so you're, you're already thinking of having your own business by then? I think at that time, I still, it was kind of like my early years of college. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I still really saw Ocean Creations as a, a form of like, a source of me to be able to travel mm. i wasn't necessarily thinking like i'm here to find a manufacturer or mm. i'm here to further ocean creations yeah it was kind of just like i'm so lucky oc lets me travel yeah you know is yeah. a form of that and i think maybe while i was there my like brain started changing and like i started putting like two and two together like mm -hmm. oh this works you know there's a whole world out there mm -hmm. things like that so at what point did you know that you wanted to take it to the next level like oh this is what i wanted to do this is what i'm just gonna go full force into and it, this will be my career yeah that was not until like years later so i waited tables in the meantime while while in college and then i had oc and i was traveling a lot so i needed jobs that i could like easily travel mm -hmm. which is like waitressing you know they allow that or the place i was at did yeah where where, where was that that was at Fire Grill in Waikiki. Oh, I don't think I've ever been there. Yeah, it's not a super popular place, <laughs> but I like that because there's a lot of leniency. Okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's a nice, it's a steakhouse. Okay. Mm -hmm. nice. It's still open today. Okay. And Check it out they, one day, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they. I think they have a good happy hour, as in like like um, food happy hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Every hour on this podcast is happy for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I mean, not just kidding, but bad dad joke. Yeah, <laughs> <Continue. laughs> yes, yeah, so I was waiting tables then and then that's kind of when I started feeling a little more pressure from mm. my family and whatnot because I graduated from college with a business and accounting major and I think there was a lot of like expectations so like what are you doing now mm. like what's up you know waitressing is cool and all but like what are you gonna do yeah you have a degree <laughs> you're gonna use it those yeah. classic questions the, yeah exactly the what job are you gonna do with your career mm -hmm. i mean with your degree yeah so i started working at the bank i worked at first hawaiian bank um for maybe like a year a little less than a year and i absolutely like hated it <laughs> I just like couldn't, I mean, I have an accounting major, right? So yeah. bank is like the number one job for an accounting major. And you know, it's bad when 
you love your coworkers. You have the best boss, most inspiring, coolest boss ever. And every single one of your coworkers are amazing. And you still don't like it. Wow. Like, that's how you know. Yeah. Like, this is not for you. Mm-hmm. You know, usually, like, you don't get along with your coworkers or your boss sucks and that's why you hate your job. But it's like, no, they're all amazing and you still hate it. Yeah. You just weren't passionate about that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a common theme in people's lives is, you know, doing something that you don't love, mm-hmm. even though, you know, the environment around you can be good. Right. If you don't love doing it, it's going to suck. Yeah. Like, who's going to want to wake up in the morning and do something that they don't want to do? You know, the, the only thing I the only thing I can think of is, like, working out. <laughs> like, does anybody really wake up and want to put themselves through that, you know? But you're doing yeah. it because there's benefits to it. Right. Right. But, like, something like a job where it's like, ugh, I got to make this commute. I got to sit at this desk for, n- what, nine, nine hours, five, yeah. whatever, nine to five I don't know. I don't want to do the math. I'm not a math major, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah. So, so you 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 noticed that really quickly. Yeah, I noticed it quickly. But before I started that job, I didn't know. So it was really. I think it was really important for me to like try it out, go through the steps, go through the phases. Um, of course, in the beginning, I was super excited, loved it, and then like slowly, I'm like, oh my god. I'm slowly dying. <laughs> what am I doing? Out of here? Yeah. <laughs> So I think it was like really critical for me to be in that situation for me to like then after that. And this was kind of during the pandemic too, the beginning stages of the pandemic. I was like, I am going to go full force with OC. Like, and I think it's hard when you're like in social settings and people ask like, what are you doing now for Mm -hmm. you to be like, I'm doing OC. Like that's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like, so I think after the bank, um, the bank experience that's when i was like when you go out and people ask what you're doing you're gonna say only oc Mm -hmm. and i think that's when i was like okay you're doing it yes all full force like you're in it to win it let's go Mm -hmm. you you it's like by you putting it out there and saying it to people it's like you're making a promise with yourself exactly and you're it's it's like okay well now everybody knows so now i have to execute that, so that's how I was when I did my race to 50K where I paid off my student loans in one year. Wow. Before, like months before, when I was still in Madagascar finishing the Peace Corps, people would ask, um, people would ask me, oh, what are you doing next? Uh-huh. And I, t- I would tell them, I'm going to pay off $50,000 of student loans in one year by doing odd jobs. Oh, my god! Like, I would wow, tell people that really before cool. I even started just because I, I, I had my mindset, like, I'm going to do this. People can think it's crazy. I'm going to prove them wrong if they think this is the most ridiculous idea they've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> and I did it. Just like you did it. Congratulations. Yeah, but that's how important it is to speak it to existence. Totally. I totally Mm -hmm. believe in that. And even saying, like, I think I was, like, a little embarrassed to say, like, you know, I went to this school. My parents worked so hard to get me there. And then I went to college. I got an accounting degree. And I think, like, in the beginning stages, I was a little embarrassed to say, Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do a jewelry business. Like, you know, and I have no, at the time, I don't really have any credibility to be like, well, yeah, I have a store, I have this, I have mm-hmm. that. It's just like, I don't really have anything right now, but that's what I'm going to do. And I think for me, it's like, if you're embarrassed to tell someone that, like, no one's going to take you serious. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't even believe in yourself, like, they're not going to care. But if you go and be like, yeah, I'm doing a jewelry business, it's, I don't know all the answers right now, but I'm going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. It just comes off as like, Oh, yeah, she's serious. Oh, mm-hmm. well, it's confidence, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody's going to believe in you. Totally. Yeah, and even if nobody believes in you, as long as you believe in yourself, that yeah. you can do it, that you, you can succeed, then you can do it. Totally. Totally. Like, I, I mean, I've, I'm living proof of that. You're living proof of that. There's so many examples of situations just like this. So I, I love to hear it. I love seeing it. Um, going back a little bit because uh, through all of this seems like you have to have a lot of discipline Mm -hmm. and i know that you're a black belt in taekwondo with gas prices soaring at an average of five dollars and forty cents per gallon here in the hawaiian islands owning electric means zero gas new technologies was founded in 2014 and is the world's leading provider of smart and eco-friendly two-wheelers News mission is to provide global customers e-vehicles to make the most out of life. Hashtag make life electric. What does this mean? They want to inspire new adventures and new experiences. 
They want to transform the way we move around our cities with cost-effective, energy-efficient and environmentally friendly vehicles. And through sustainable energy, they hope to build a more sustainable future. New Honolulu has officially opened its first flagship store in Kaimuki, Oahu to bring Hawaii a more cost-effective alternative mode of transportation with all new electric mopeds, kick scooters, motor scooters and e-bikes. With 100% electric designs, users of new products will be saving money on transportation. For less than 2 cents per mile, new riders pay as low as 47 cents per charge, giving them ranges from 28 miles up to 87 miles depending on the vehicle and battery size. Use promo code HAWAIIIVERSE to save $100 on mopeds and motor scooters from September 29th to October 31st, plus get a cool new Honolulu t-shirt with any purchase. Uh, and I've, I'm, I've always admired martial arts because of the discipline aspect of it. Because I'm, I'm a big guy, guy that's into, I'm, I'm a small guy. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not literally a big guy. I'm a medium sized guy, <laughs> but I am big into discipline. <laughs> So how did you get into that and um, what do you think you've learned from that um, type of martial arts? I love that question. I, um, so my mom got me into, into Taekwondo and it was literally because I was such a fragile, shy girl growing up. Like I, it would be so hard for me to like speak up, talk to anybody, like even like ask to like, cha like if I ordered food at a restaurant, I'd be like scared to like say like, oh, actually, can I change it? Or mm. can I get more water? Like I would be so shy. And like, I think my mom just noticed that. And she was like, okay, we got to do something about this. You need to like increase your confidence. So I started um, maybe, when did I start? Kind of like an elementary middle school, mm. middle school. So she got me into Taekwondo and I hated it so freaking much. It was like the worst experience. I swear, I mean, it wasn't the worst experience. It was the best experience, but in the beginning, it was the worst experience because I would cry every class. I literally would be called out every class. like On what? Just like not speaking up, not, mm. you know, not being loud, not like You would kick something tall. and you'd be like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, saying sorry, things like that. I literally had to, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I would have to stand up in front of the whole class almost every time and like scream, I'm not fragile. Like it was a really <laughs> big character building for me. And I'm so grateful for that experience. And then on top of that, it did teach a lot of discipline. Like mm -hmm. I'd beg my mom, like, please, I don't want to go. She's like, no, you have to go. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that was that. And then when I kind of got older, like that was just the beginning stages of it. But when I got older, I grew to really, truly love it. And then I took it a lot more serious. And then it was kind of on me because I was older to like be the disciplined one. And I do feel like I missed out on so many like fun things with my friends at school because I had to go train. I mean, I lived in the gym Monday through Saturday. Oh. Every day after school, I used to catch the bus to practice, stay there all night because my mom was actually the like receptionist there. Mm -hmm. So she had to stay really late until closing. So I would be there from like the little kids classes all the way to the adult classes. And sometimes they'd let me jump in sometimes, you know, just because I'm like I would do my homework there. Sometimes I would shower there. Uh -huh. So I literally lived in that gym for a big portion of like my childhood. But the discipline and like to really learn like you can do it, I think is it stemmed from that. Mm -hmm. And I love that I can like transition that into like my business mm -hmm. because it totally has helped me. I mean, yeah, I yeah. was so like shy and now I can like easily have a conversation, be mm -hmm. on this podcast, you know. Yeah. And you're doing great. <laughs> yeah. I think I what I love about, um, you know, discipline and uh you know, st staying true to who you are and getting what you want is whatever you do and whatever you decide to pursue, there's going to be sacrifices. And you know, being disciplined is knowing that, you know, you have to make sacrifices because you can't get what you want. Mm -hmm. That That's basically what it is. Um, or like, you know, like you want to go hang out with your friends, but you have to do this, right? You have yes. to make that sacrifice. Um, but it's usually for the betterment of yourself in the right. long term, right? A lot of times we're just thinking, you know, temporary satisfaction, you know, same like if um, eating junk food, for example, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh, man, this burger and ice cream and shake or milkshake and fries sounds so good. 
you know, but in the long run, it's like, oh, I feel terrible after. Literally, you know? instantly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm happy that you stuck with the Taekwondo and you ended up becoming a black belt. Um, do you still uh, practice it or what? No, so yeah. not anymore. I mean, I think after, you know, I was doing that through middle school, high school and college. And then when I like started to pursue like a career more so, I think that's when it kind of like started to fade. Mm-hmm. I stopped going and I really pursued all of that discipline into my business. Mm-hmm. And it is like, I think the level I was doing it was a full-time job. It was like, yeah. you really don't have a life. It's not something you casually do. It's like, you're all, you're in it to win it with Taekwondo. So it was like, I feel like it was kind of impossible for me to pursue my business mm-hmm. and be fully invested. You know, I had to choose one. Like you said, there's mm-hmm. sacrifices. So. I chose my business. Yeah, I think you've made the right choice. Yeah. And, you know, you get, like you said, you get to take what you've learned from that and put it into your business, you right. know. And so it seems like uh, f- from what I've learned so far, all these things, like even uh, accounting, majoring in accounting or business, like just because you don't have a job at the bank doesn't mean you can't use the skills you've learned and in, like implement it in other um, facets of your life. Right. You know, like you have your business. Right. You, totally. you, you know numbers. You know? <laughs> so that that's super helpful. Yeah. So what do you what do you think is the the biggest lesson you learned in life so far from traveling to Taekwondo to having your own business? What do you think it is? Uh, I mean, the biggest lesson, I guess, um, I, I guess it, I want to say it's like up to you. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is up to you. You know, if you want to, if you want to travel, then go travel, like go do it, figure it out. You know, you don't need a lot of money to travel. There's so many different options. Like you are in the Peace Corps. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many different ways you can do it. If you want to get a college degree or you want a major in accounting or whatever it be, and you don't have the resources or the family or the connections to back you up, there are other ways to do it. Mm-hmm. You want to start a business and you're like, well, I have no money. I don't know how it's like, figure it out it's up to you yes i totally agree yeah i think we we like to make excuses and limit ourselves um but half the times we don't even know our own limits right and (laughs) even if you have an idea and it's a big limit like where i feel like we're really limitless yeah yeah and the only way to figure that out is by doing exactly you know taking these big risks figuring out you know what my boundaries are what i'm capable of Mm -hmm. because unless you you um don't get out of your comfort zone you never know what what is what else is outside of that you know that that zone i don't want to say zone again but you know there's just so much out there yeah there and is you just gotta just go for it, it totally yeah. and like be well-rounded try new things mm-hmm. be open to failing like yeah even like for me i think saying like when i had no credibility at credibility at the time saying like yeah i'm gonna start a jewelry business and it's my career it's like you're like embarrassed you know it's like well you gotta Mm -hmm. you gotta start somewhere Mm -hmm. yeah all that doubt so how was it opening up your first shop at kamakanali so before that you would just sell online yeah uh, at the from the taekwondo taekwondo gym Uh, (laughs) where where, where would you sell it (laughs) so originally you slang it at at Le Jardin (laughs) no literally (laughs) in my trunk you know I got everyone's everyone's moms at Le Jardin for their birthdays got jewelry every Mother's Day they got jewelry yeah you had that you remember in um in school they had that like crayon box or um that little box where you can put things inside, like all your school tools. Maybe okay, it's like yes, more okay. elementary. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> you, did you just have all the jewelry pieces in that? You just go yeah, open literally. it. Yeah, <laughs> literally. I had like a little plastic bin. You could like shuffle through it. I had stuff in my trunk, um, all of that. So that was kind of like, people would like meet up with me at my high school. Like customers till this day will come into the store and be like, Mom, like, remember we used to go to her high school and pick up jewelry? <laughs> People have come to Chaminade to pick up jewelry. Um, in college, it was kind of fun, too, because, like, it's a great way to meet people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, people kind of know you. Like, in a school setting, it's a little easier to, like, word of mouth sell. Mm-hmm. So being in school definitely helped with sales. And then it was after college, it was all online. And I really like rely on social media for like promoting and things like that. And then networking is a huge one for me. And then, yeah, so it was just mainly online. And then when I 
officially was like thinking about leaving the bank, I really was like, okay, let's see if this works. Let's really try to pursue it before you quit. And like sales were really picking up. Mm. Um, and I like started thinking about like getting some help to like help pack orders and things like that. And then I was doing like a lot of pop-ups at the time too. And like the, the show for the pop-ups were like so incredible. And like, so I'm so grateful for that. So then I started thinking like, I think I can do a store. Yeah. Yeah. And you have such a good support system. Your friend group, they seem so supportive. Totally. You know, they, they work for you. They promote it on social media. Yeah. They show up to your events. How awesome is that? I, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't deny that. That's like one of the biggest blessings I've, mm -hmm. you know, been able to have like family, friends and like even acquaintance, like you, you came to my grand opening. Like no, that was no. so special. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I love what you're doing and I, I don't really wear jewelry very much this is the <laughs> only piece i own and I, I wear it on only special occasions um but i just I, I love supporting people doing amazing things you know that's why i have the podcast that's why i like bringing people on to share their story but to, to see it especially young people just like our, our age yeah do something like that it's so cool to me it makes me so happy and i, I just want everybody to succeed so yeah, that's why I, I love uh, showing up to those events and just seeing seeing how stoked everybody else thank at the you. event is. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. How do you feel about jewelry on men? Jewelry on men, yeah. I think it's trending right now. Mm -hmm. I've seen like so many, like guys wear pearls Yeah, now, uh, like, shout out Jay Fong, the jeweler. Yes, <laughs> Jay Fong. He provides all the guys with their pearl jewelry. <laughs> they wear crystals. I've seen guys mm -hmm. wear like crystal bracelets and things like that. Um, I think it's cool. Like, of course, as a jeweler, yeah, yeah, yeah. bring it you're, on. You're not going to say that, yeah. <laughs> That's another demographic that you can reach, right? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I think, like, I primarily focus on women, and now that it's becoming kind of trendy, I'm, like, thinking about entering that space. Mm -hmm. But I love it. I think when guys wear jewelry, it looks good. Yeah, maybe uh, one day you can have an OC it guy. I, yeah. I, would love it. I think you should be the first one. <laughs> I was going to make jokes. Huh? I'm just going to... I was gonna overuse the gold chain and lifted Yoda joke <laughs> way too many times. <laughs> I don't know if people wanna see that. I'm down, but just giving you a heads up. <laughs> it's only 30 minutes, yeah. so oh, okay, you, okay. as much as you can fit it in in that time. Okay, okay, right. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, yeah. So um, you have your store at Kamakana Lee and then you have the store in Ala Moana. What was the process of opening that store up? Like, and especially the Ala Moana, that's huge. Yeah. When, when I first met you, uh, I think you, you mentioned that you, you were going to do that because you, you had like uh, this big idea or you were in the process of opening up a store at Ala Moana. Um, and then once that happened, I was like, okay, now I can get her on the podcast because yeah. I think you said you wanted to wait until after that happened. This was a while ago. Yeah, this was a met. long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was still like in the works, mm -hmm. like still kind of an idea. And when I'm going through things like that, like opening up a new shop, um, <laughs> it is like a wind world of like my life is upside down. It's so much happening, so many moving parts um, on top of sustaining like a business that's, mm -hmm. you know, we like we are like constantly in the mix of things or we try to be at least. So it's a constant. It's not just wake up and it's all good. You mm -hmm. know, we're constantly thinking of new ideas, thinking of. How can we make it better? How can we change um, all of that? So yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely feel a lot more calm now that both stores are open and mm -hmm. I still have yet to figure out my next venture. Um, so you caught me at the perfect time. Okay, perfect, <laughs> yes, I love it. It all works out, the timing always works out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think like with, when it comes to like opening up stores, um, it's, you definitely have to break through that like mental factor of like, yes, you can do this. You can think of like a thousand things to go wrong, but you really have to get your like mental health in check and be like, OK, let's focus on the positive things, you know, because you are taking such a huge risk. Mm -hmm. It's like financial like, risk, financial too. risk, totally. Yeah. And it's like, how would I know how it's going to do at Kamakana Lee, for example, that was my first store. Like, how do I know if it's going to do good or bad if I've never done it before? Like, I have no idea if it's going to do good. And then opening up a second store, you're like, OK, is the other store going to be affected? Like, is it going to be negative? Is it going to be positive? Like, I how would I know? I've never mm -hmm. done it. Like, so we just have to try. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, getting your mental health kind of in check is, like, the first step. And then just taking things, like, day by day and, like, one step at a time. And that's, like, kind of cliche, but, like, mm -hmm. truly, 
It's the only way I can get things done. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your mental health in check? What are your practices? Are you um, spiritual? Do you, you know, do physical activities to keep your mental health in check? You know, like yoga, you know, surfing is my mental but physical activity, you know? I love that. Mm -hmm. I think having a physical one is super important, Mm -hmm. especially like coming from like a heavily like training background. Um, I don't get to do physical or it hasn't been like a super big priority for me right now. But How I do you stay in shape? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just running around carrying boxes. <laughs> it's the best workout ever. Just being an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, <running around>. exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I haven't like had a chance to really find my thing in this like new phase of my life. I'm excited to like figure whatever, figure it out. But mental health wise, like I really have to talk to myself, which is so funny, Mm. but I need to sit myself down sometimes or like take a car ride and really be like, oh my God, what if it fails? What if this happens? What if that happens? I have to be like, listen, like as fun as this is (laughs) thinking about all this stuff, Mm. like can we switch the script a little Mm -hmm. bit and like get real? Like what if, you know, like what if it's amazing, you know, so I think kind of like really checking myself and um, journaling is also another one mm-hmm. where I can like kind of speak to myself a little bit better. Yeah. Do you speak out loud or just this is just in your head? This is in my head, mm-hmm. but if it's really bad, I got to do the out loud thing. Yeah. You say, you say, I'm not fragile. <laughs> I'm oh confident. God. You look in I the mirror, believe. just like, Haley, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> believe in yourself. I'm like, not You're an OC off. baddie. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. That's, that's funny. Um, do you do you believe in like crystals or like lucky? I know you have like lucky numbers. The, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. have, what is it called? Numbers. Angel numbers. Yeah. Uh, there's gemstones, charms, and you know. All be things. honest. Be honest. Are those just marketing techniques, or do you actually believe in them? So I first and foremost believe <laughs> in God. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I'm definitely like I use you know like I pray and like talk to God when things get tough or even Mm -hmm. when things are great being grateful and everything like that Mm -hmm. but I do love crystals I think like my initial like attraction to crystals are just I love things that are pretty and I'm like so intrigued by like I think that's why like jewelry is such a perfect field for me because like I love like collecting crystals even when I was young or like rocks and things like that I just think it's like so pretty so that was like my initial um attraction to crystals and then to find out they have meanings i'm like Mm -hmm. well that's cool like i love that too and then with angel numbers i like to look at it as more of like a reminder Mm. so when you see like you know like for example i'm wearing a crystal and say like i'm wearing this jade piece here and okay can you can you hold it up to that camera okay cool this is like a jade piece so it's like that's beautiful and luck so I, just, I see the money sign. Yeah, the money <laughs> sign. Abundance and luck by the jade. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, like I love wearing it and being reminded about like, you know, abundance and luck. So mm-hmm. I think it's like a good reminder. Citrine, my mom first gifted me like a citrine crystal mm-hmm. and it's like a success stone. So like I love to, if anyone tells me like they're starting a business, I love to give gift them citrine. And I'm like, just wear this as a reminder. Like you're going to be successful. Mm. So... Yeah, that's how I look at it. Yeah. What about um, like astrology, horoscopes? Are you into that too? Yeah, no, yeah. I definitely <laughs> am. No, I'm not. I'm actually asking this. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to like um, make fun of it because yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, people always make fun of it. Yeah, no, they yeah. do. Yeah. I think I saw this funny meme. Uh, or it was this like a tweet that said like, <laughs> guys, at some point in life, guys have to choose between having sex. Or be, pretending to be into horoscopes. Literally, yeah. Taking horoscopes <laughs> or getting lazy. Yeah, yeah something that. like that. I <laughs> no, thought that I, was so funny. I literally, I, I reposted that one, day, one time. No, yeah, that's true. Because, I mean, I think if you look at the grander scheme of things um, and, like, the universe and, you know, the world, mm-hmm. the like, how small we are on, like, this little earth, I mean, I'd like to believe that we're here for a reason and for a purpose rather than randomness yeah you know and people believe whatever they want (laughs) but i would rather choose to believe we're here for a reason Mm -hmm. i think it makes me happier to think that so i'm gonna go with that Mm -hmm. so what do you think your purpose is my purpose Mm um i think my purpose is to you know bring a little like sparkle or light into someone's life Mm -hmm. and to be like a living example of you know 
there's two way to, two ways to look at things and why not choose the better way you mm-hmm. know if i can do it you can do it um we all are dealt with a certain like deck of cards and we really have a choice to stay in that scenario or make it your own mm-hmm. so yeah i think my purpose is to shed like share that onto others and mm-hmm. i think like something about me is when someone's telling me something i truly believe that they can do it mm-hmm. like i think i like really look at them look at them and i'm like you like that's super awesome you know and i think that's something i need to, like i'm here for mm-hmm. just to support others yeah and to totally. be the light if they don't have a light in their life exactly mm-hmm. yeah that's awesome a lot of it is just perspective too mm-hmm. you know it sounds like you you have a very positive mindset you know you you have these beliefs and you you know you you want to look at the 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 bright part of the day instead of the dark side of the yeah. night you know it i think that that's good i'm i'm a very big optimist too one one of the the coolest things that i kind of uh, realized when I was in Madagascar is this, the, the Malagasy word for salt is sira. Okay. So that's that's salt. And then the, but the Malagasy word for sugar is sira mami, which basically, which mean mami is sweet. So okay. basically sugar is just sweet salt. Mm. So, you know, so I, I looked at it as sweet it's salt. basically, you know, we have salt, these salty situations. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is, you know, find the sweetness in those in those situations and it becomes sugar. Because basically sugar is just sweet salt. Mm, right. I love that. So it's, it's all about looking at things in a different light. Yeah, you know, totally. so if you're going to look at things as just salt or you're going to look at it as sugar. No, but that's totally up to you. They're they're very similar. Just one's a little sweeter than the the other. (laughs) Right, yeah. Yeah. It's like technically the same, but... Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too, like I've tried life looking at it as salt, you Mm -hmm. know, as you would say, and I've tried life looking at it as sugar, and it's way better when you look (laughs) at it with sugar. (laughs) Like it's way better. Your life is just so much better that way. Yeah, just hopefully the organic, (laughs) non-processed, not no... uh, was it called re refined sugars? <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. yeah the Still away from those stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those are just that's the fake happiness. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> Which exists. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's so crazy how you can just relate everything to just anything. Anything, much. right? It's 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 all interpretation. Mm-hmm. You know, I we could we could be talking about this chair and how how it's a symbol of strength and support and you know yeah totally yeah, it's it like holds anything. You up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could go on and on. <laughs> so I love I love that mindset. All right, so um, before we get into Instagram questions, I, I just want to know how do you manage your time and like how do you have time for yourself? Oh, yeah. I think the beginning stages of OC and like how hard I work to get it to where it's at today, and I promise it's just the beginning as well, but I did not have time for myself at all. Like that wasn't even a, a question. Like it was pretty clear. Like you, when you saw me too, you could tell like, Oh yeah, she does not take time for herself. <laughs> it was pretty clear. It's funny because I, I meet people all the time, um, especially entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I just I I talk to them, get their life story. I'm just like, how do you? Yeah. How like what? Like when do you ever just relax? Yeah. <laughs> when are you not working? <laughs> it's like oh no, never. That's yeah. the answer. But um, so I think in the beginning stages, just for like how I did things, that was really important in like where we are today. Mm-hmm. Um, everything I did was work. I missed out on a lot of things. Like I had so much FOMO because I never would go out. I never would see friends. Mm. I um, the only time I would see friends if they came and worked with me. Mm. Like if they like, I'm like, oh, you want to hang out? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this. Do you want to come? That's the only time I would kind of see friends and family. Um, and that was kind of like a short period of like really getting OC on its feet. Now that. Kamakana is open and um, Ala Moana is open. I'm really s- trying to step into like balancing work mm-hmm. and life a little bit more. And like my main goal is to take a day off mm-hmm. and really truly not work. Um, so I'm still figuring it out. I think that's like forever changing mm-hmm. in like different phases. So like the beginning stages of OC, like there was no work life balance. Now that I'm kind of a little more secure in where the business is at. That's a goal. I think Mm -hmm. when I have my new endeavor, it's going to change too. So I think like being a little like 
soft with yourself knowing you don't have to like have this perfect work-life balance all mm -hmm. the time yeah or easier on yourself yeah yes I, I went through the same thing and like you said it's a constant struggle yeah trying to you know figure out especially when you're you're in it just like the mm -hmm. you know the, the beginning stages you know whether that's like for Hawaii verse or the other things that I did it's like you just want to hustle right you want to yeah. get it off the ground you don't want to stop until you feel like it's at a good place. Right. Um, but even in those moments, we always have to remind ourselves, take a, take some time for yourself, even though if you don't want to. Because right. the only time I would take take time for myself is when people force me to, right? Mm -hmm. Like your friends would be like, hey, Haley, stop working. Let's go out for some drinks. Let's yeah. like go, let's have a spa day, whatever mm -hmm. it is, you know, like, having those people that can kind of keep you in check is also so important right because when we're so close to the situation we just don't realize that we're burning ourselves out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then like to burn out it's like you know and sometimes your body even you get sick yeah like you can physically yeah. get sick your body's like no like stop mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah people sometimes people can see it one time when i was in um madagascar my third year i was in the city and i was working for a non um uh, community health organization I had my own place I was um, you know when when you have a when you're a third year volunteer people come to the city and they want to stay at your place so they don't have to rent stay at a hostel or oh, whatever okay, so I was sense. yeah so I was always welcoming other volunteers in while going to my job like all day mm -hmm. didn't have time for oh, myself gosh. to do my workout in the morning or you know play basketball on the weekend and I was just so tired and at some point somebody just asked me like Kamaka are you okay like your face looks so skinny um oh and just like just wasn't i guess like i just wasn't doing what i wanted to do but it like the physical it, it showed physically like i looked in the mirror i'm like oh wait yeah this is actually that they actually see something that i didn't see i yeah i need to start telling people no i need to start doing the things that i want to do totally. um, but sometimes it, it just it comes at you so fast yeah that you just don't know and you're like excited, yeah. you know, you're like in it. I, like I remember like mm. stay, not sleeping and I would just stay <laughs> up all night, work all day. And like, I would like look like a mess literally, but I just loved, I was so excited, mm -hmm. you know? So I think like, I, I can appreciate that time though. I think it was important mm -hmm. to show like, even that's a form of discipline too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. But dealing I, with the FOMO. Yeah, dealing <laughs> with the FOMO. That's discipline at its that's best. so, like, <laughs> literally, like, sometimes I get so sad, like, oh, my gosh, like, I wasn't invited to this. And, like, they're like, yeah, like, you wouldn't come. Like, why would we invite you? Like, you're not going to come. And I'm like, true, but yeah. Yeah, I'm I still, still have the so invite. sad. That's so funny you say that because <laughs> I, I definitely dealt with that um, when I moved back here after my Peace Corps service. It's like, um I had all this free time, but then I started, you know, working like all the time. And like when people would ask me to do stuff, I couldn't do it. Yeah. But then, so they stopped asking, right? Yeah. But then you're like, like oh, I wish, well, why wasn't I invited to yeah, that? Yeah, like, what did I do something? And it's like, no, yeah. you're working. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can still send out the courtesy invite. There's yeah. nothing wrong with a courtesy invite. Yeah. Totally. Remember that, everybody. Courtesy and invites. If you are sad about it, you can express that to them yeah yes yeah. don't be afraid to yeah. to say Speak how you feel mind. yeah i've had situations just like that <laughs> yeah all right so let's get into instagram questions okay we have a couple tiana.es wants to know when is your next drop oh my gosh i that totally ties into what we're talking about <laughs> because i think like i've been so into like the the work of the you know opening up the shop mm -hmm. that because i haven't had time for myself it's so hard to connect to like the creative aspect mm. of my life. So I'm working on giving myself some time to get creative and then the next shop will come. Okay. But I want it to be so big and exciting because I haven't had one in so long. Mm. So to be decided, <laughs> it is first priority on my list right now. Um, thank you for that question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. How do you get into those creative spaces? <clears throat> is it uh, just shutting everything off, kind of um, isolating yourself um, so you can just think you know when you separate yourself from technology all these distractions that's when I feel at least you can be the most creative and you know um, introspective whatever it is but you just have time to focus on what you need to do it's totally if you cut out everything else yeah totally I think like my day-to-day -day is like really managing 
it's a lot of emails, it's a lot of meetings, it's a lot of talking to new people, it's a lot of talking to customers. So alone time is so big when it comes to like me creating a new collection. Alone time, nature, and travel, mm. which are like three things in the last two years I have not had. <laughs> <laughs> so all these things are important, but I haven't done them. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm tuning into that. That's like the new phase of my life and i am super excited and a new collection is coming soon okay cool that's <laughs> such a real answer though it's like we know what we need to do but sometimes we just can't yeah. do it you know yeah i mean like for example traveling yeah. like how do i expect to travel when i'm in the middle of opening up a store yeah like where are you going <laughs> yeah yeah i'm the same i'm just like i would love to travel i mean i did a lot of traveling myself so i'm kind of like you know the travel bug isn't as bad as it was before but it's so hard to like change your priorities where it's just right. like, I have so much to do. If I take a week off, I'm going to fall so behind yeah, totally. on work. So constant struggles that we, we can relate to. Yeah. All right. So underscore Li Hao Baby wants to know what keeps you authentic and grounded in this world where being fake seems so popular. Mm, oh, my gosh. What a good question. <laughs> I, yeah, I think. Let me think about it. What keeps me grounded? Um, I think, hmm. I think I would like being fake is probably like something I would be like so hurt if anyone called me that. Um, I think I'd like to be described as genuine and I, that shows with how I talk to people and how I run my business. And it's just important for me to, to like always stay so humble about things and I think kind of a huge like motto of mine is, you know, like, shoot, I'm going to butcher this, but, you know, anything you have can be easily taken away, mm. you know, and everything. So it's like to have a high head and like, or a big head and like a chip on your shoulder or whatever it may be, or to be fake or like thinking you're someone you're not is just not going to get you far. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, that's always been something super important to me. So like how I stay grounded is just remembering that, that like you're not better than anyone else and you will never be better than anyone else. And everyone is so special and have like, they have such a big purpose. It might not be in your life, but they do. So I think it's just so important to remember that. And it's something I always like remind myself. Um, another thing too is like meeting new people or things like that. Um, I always like have this thought that like no matter who they are they know something you don't know mm -hmm. and they can teach you something like whether it's someone you know just anybody you know they everyone you meet they know something you don't know mm -hmm. so I think that keeps me grounded and you know I just hate to be described as fake that's like probably the worst thing like call me anything with <laughs> don't call me that that's like horrible you know yeah that's a beautiful answer I I, I think a lot of people can relate to that and yeah who who wouldn't want to be known for their authenticity being genuine being real yeah especially because you feel like you're putting out this you know th this person like this is who i am right yeah and as it, in social media it can sometimes get lost totally. because people make assumptions all over social media um but yeah to to be able to just be your real authentic self and have people see that and appreciate that it, it's a great feeling. Right. Yeah, so totally. there are some fake people out there. Totally. There's Just a lot. don't be one of them. <laughs> yeah. Just don't be fake. Yeah, yeah, don't be fake. Don't be and fake. Buy some jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think, too, like, if you are experiencing, like, problems with fake people, like, maybe that's just the phase they're in right now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, who knows what they're going through. Like, yeah. just don't let it affect you. you or... Know? Don't be around those people. Yes. Because that's yeah. probably not the right group for you. Totally. Don't yeah. let it affect you. Like, if it <laughs> is, like, you need separation. Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid to cut people out of your life. Yeah. Or just to realize, like, maybe I'm not going to vibe with this person. And that's totally fine. You know, some people just, you know, they aren't meant to be. Right. You know. And I think that's, like, the main takeaway, too, mm -hmm. from, like, authenticity and, like, not being fake is being okay with people maybe not liking you. Yeah. Like, you know, it's so easy. Like, everyone's talking about this and you don't agree. So you're fake and you're like, mm. oh, yeah, I do agree. Yeah, but yeah. It's like you need to be OK with saying like, I don't I don't agree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we're, we're afraid to speak our truth sometimes. 
and uh, be an outcast or not have not be agreeable. Right. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a very courageous thing to speak your mind mm -hmm. and be self-aware to be like, I don't actually like this, mm -hmm. you know, so maybe I'm not just going to do that. I'm lucky I, I was... I, I was able to figure out what I liked very early on. So like by the time I was in college and people would go out and party and go to clubs, I'm just like, I, honestly, I, like I would go out and hang out with people. Usually I, I would be the designated driver. Mm -hmm. But at some point I was like, honestly, I don't like this guys. I'm, I'd rather stay home and hang out with auntie and uncle yeah. <laughs> and uh, play cards or something. So I'll just drop you guys off. If you guys need a drop right after, come call me. But yeah, I, I, I don't like this. Yeah. That's like a perfect example, <laughs> literally. Like, and that's kind of a hard one too at a young age because that's the end thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And it could be so easy for you to be like fake and be like pretend. Yeah. But exactly. yeah, at some point you need to be like, you know, I actually this is not for me. Yeah. And the only person it's hurting is yourself, because you know maybe your friends will be bummed, like, oh, I wish you could come, but yeah. you know if they don't understand that that's not that's not something that you don't like to do, then they you know then probably not good friends for you. Um, but also, life hack, if you say no to a lot of things, the one time you do say yes, it's like a special occasion, so it makes it even better. <laughs> They're like, You're I like think like the star, one time, we, yeah, yeah we, we met we met at uh, Moani. <laughs> uh, Moani's that one night, it was like super crowded, yeah. and I'm just like, I'm never here. Yeah. I'm just here because I forget what the event was. I was with Diogo and uh, your it's friend Joy. Birthday yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe, I know one time we went after our friend's bachelor, or our friend's wedding. Okay, okay. So I don't know if that was the same night I met you. And then you were also like, yeah, I never come out either. Yeah. But it's so fun. Everyone's like, oh my God, you're out. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Finally, we Yay, finally see like, you. You're not working. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. So it does make those moments a little bit more exciting. <laughs> totally. Yeah. All right. So this next question comes from Ali.Yana. Okay. Uh, this person wants to know, what is some advice you could give to those who run small businesses? Um, okay. I mean, I guess it depends on like e each business is super different. Um, small businesses, though, advice that I would give. I think the really big advice, especially starting off and always, but is really appreciate the customers you have now. Mm. Cater and make those connections. I think like it's so easy to want to expand and expand and expand and expand. And you're like, no, I want more customers. I want to market to new people. I want to give them these new offers or these new products and like get the new people. But starting off, it's so important to know your customers' names, to like truly invest into them. If you know they like something, like add, like write a handwritten card, really cater to them and show love for them because they're taking a chance with you. You are a small business. You know, like when I was a small business, no credibility whatsoever. You're a small business. You're just starting out. So the people who are taking a chance with you, really invest with them. Get to know their name. Get to know their kids' names, you know, and appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. I think that's a good one. Yeah, that's awesome. You you started from the bottom. And now <laughs> you're a big business. You got <laughs> yeah. uh, two stores at some of the biggest shopping centers. That's how it makes me so happy every time I hear that. I know. It's so <laughs> crazy. It's literally insane to me. did you ever think you'd be here no no yeah. i didn't i mean it never was like a huge goal of mine mm. to have two stores i think like i said like i just take it day by day mm. yeah yeah <laughs> it's exciting just capitalize on those opportunities all right swim surf swim surf am swim surfs am i don't know how you should say this swim surf sam <laughs> wants to know what's your best self-care tip Oh, my best self-care tip. Uh, I think it changes all the time. But right now, I just like to stay home by myself. Alone time. Yes, alone time. Mm. And like in a, my space and like my home. Mm. And uh, um, just do absolutely nothing. <laughs> just veg out. Do you watch <laughs> Netflix? Or? Literally anything. Yeah, ne Netflix, podcasts. Literally mm. just sit on the couch. Close my eyes. Like just to do nothing and talk yeah. to nobody. <laughs> I, I love that. I'm, I'm a big alone time advocate. Yeah. Yes. Just, yeah. Just even if it's just like scrolling mindlessly on something. Yeah. Um, for me, I have Sunday footballs now. I just watch football all day. I don't worry about any work. Fine. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some people don't get it. They're just like, why would you want to just 
watch football all day. Like, you know, some people aren't into sports right. or whatever. But look at it as like doing somebody doing something they love to do. Mm-hmm. You know, whether like maybe you you love hiking or doing other sports or making jewelry or whatever. That's kind of like your alone time or your your release. Right. So like some if it's like watching football all day, like that's, that's totally cheating. fine. That's yeah. totally fine. And I'm just saying this because I'm trying to give myself an excuse. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be defensive for myself. If anybody <laughs> thinks watching football all day on Sunday is a bad thing, it's okay. Okay. It's self care. <laughs> yeah, it's self care. Okay. It's 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 for my mental health. All right. <laughs> Except if my fantasy team loses, then that's bad for my mental health. Mm. So everybody in my league, don't beat me, or I'm gonna have bad <laughs> mental health. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, last question um, comes from the same person. Do you want children? If so, how many and would you want to raise them here in Hawaii? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, okay, so I do not want children anytime soon. I'm not really like big on like pets and children right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I of course, not of course, but I do want children eventually. Um, I think two is a nice number. And yes, here in Hawaii. I think mm-hmm. it's so special growing up here. It's such a privilege. And um, just to be in this environment is so special. So I definitely would want my kids to get to experience that. And yeah, I think two is a nice number. I think one is like they need a friend. So, mm-hmm. you, know, so yeah. two. And you, you grew up with two people. Yeah, I yeah. grew up with a brother. I think mm-hmm. it's super special. Even like in my adult life to have a brother like... You know, sometimes we'll go get happy hour. We'll like hang out. It's like so fun. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have five siblings, so I love. Oh it. my gosh, yeah. five <laughs> siblings! Wow. Yeah, it's crazy sometimes, but yeah. yeah, we all love each other. I think I've always wanted like a big family, so mm-hmm. like a lot of kids. But now that I'm like an adult, I'm like, mm-hmm. whoa, that's a lot. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> thought about adopting? I have. I could mm-hmm. definitely see myself possibly mm-hmm. adopting. Um, I think that's such a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think. In a long time from now. Yeah, yeah a long time. <laughs> same, same for me. I I can totally see you just dressing up your kids, yeah, decking them oh out in God. some, you know, nice clothing, <laughs> yeah, jewelry, all that. Uh, that's yeah. going to be exciting to see in the future. I'm sure social media will still be around. Yeah. By then. Definitely. I don't see it going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that question, though. Super, yeah. Great, super great cute. question. Um, what is your favorite number and why? I feel like, because you said two. Uh, I feel like you're going to have a good answer for this. Oh, hey, my favorite number is seven. Lucky number. Yeah, it's a lucky number. And so my brother was always number 17 for his sports. So I always loved number seven. So that's like one reason. And then seven is a lucky number. But I think like most of my life, you know, like when I said I've seen, I've lived like the salt version of life Mm -hmm. and then I've lived the sugar version of life. I think like I've always like saw myself as kind of like, uh, unlucky or just like got like the you know the bad end of the stick mm-hmm. things like that and then like with this new sugar outlook on things I'm like well if I just I'm just gonna say I'm a lucky person like I'm just gonna claim it like yeah I'm lucky seven's mm-hmm. my lucky number because I'm a lucky person and things are good for me so that's why seven's my lucky number because mm-hmm. I'm just like owning the fact that I'm lucky all of a sudden, I just woke up one day. And I was like, you know what? I'm lucky. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, in some aspects of life, you could look at it like that. But I, I, I don't want people to say you're lucky to take away from the hard work you put in oh, for your business side. Yeah, totally. Because I think a lot of people use that word lucky too yeah. loosely, where it's just like, wow, this person is so lucky. She has two stores in Ala oh, Moana. Like, no, no. That's so lucky, but no, no, no. you don't know how much work that took, all the struggle, the sacrifices that you had to go through. Yeah, so totally. Yeah, yeah, it's a trigger word. Lucky is definitely a trigger word. Yes, yeah. And then I just was like, you know, I'm I'm like over saying it's like a trigger word, like mm-hmm. or getting offended by it. Saying people are saying like, oh my god, she's so lucky because of this. It's like, it's like annoying. you said, it yeah. is annoying. Yeah. yeah, but like you said too, like the amount of work. I've put in that Mm -hmm. no one knows or will ever know is like Mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. 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 Truly. Yeah. And I think there's different types of luck. There's blind luck. Yeah. There's like blind luck finding $20 on the ground. Yeah. That's lucky. You know? Totally. Yeah. Put it, uh, yeah. You know, I don't know, like some, something's about to hit, hit you and you back away just at the right moment. Yeah. Well, that's lucky, you know? 
but, but then, yeah. Yeah, but then there's ways to look at it too. So like what if something hit you, but it was preventing you from something else. So yeah. technically you getting hit was lucky. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I don't know. Do you, no, do you know that, that Chinese proverb, that Chinese story where about the horse? Okay, oh. I feel like I might if you explain it to me. Okay, well, I don't want to butcher it, but I've <laughs> heard people mention it on other podcasts where okay. basically, okay, let me let me try to think of this because I don't want to I don't <laughs> want to butcher it. Yeah, um you can definitely go on Instagram or YouTube and find the the better story okay. of it on other podcasts. But basically, I think this guy's son was about to go off to war. Okay. And before that, he was like riding a horse okay. and he falls off the horse, breaks his leg. Mm. And they're like, oh, wow, he's so lucky he didn't go to war. And then blah, 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 other things happen. And then they're like, oh, wow, he's so lucky. But then something bad happens and they're like, something you know they're like oh he's lucky this it, it continues like that okay and then basically the moral of the story is you never know what's gonna happen so, um from every situation right so you don't know if it's lucky or not right yeah so yeah. basically what you said yeah so basically i didn't even have to say that stuff i could have <laughs> just stuck with what you said no, but, but i, I like thought it. about that yeah. thing i just uh i i wish i could could remember the whole thing because it's such it's such a good story but people just just look it up you can find it yeah i'm YouTube, glad you mentioned lucky. it because yeah. i'm gonna look it up too and then yeah. you know it's just like a, another reminder you know mm -hmm. it'll like really sink in guys yeah yeah <laughs> so not not to be so quick to you know assume something yeah, yeah. like oh my god i'm so unlucky it's like yeah. well what if you yeah. know and that's just kind of like the mindset thing of things yeah so, so, i mean same thing where like maybe not getting something that you want or you know, right. not getting a job and like, oh, I really wanted that job. But maybe something else better is going to come up, you know? Yeah. So totally. you never know. You never know. True. Just take it day by day. Day by day, <laughs> yeah. And like, you could look at it really bad or you could look at it really good. Yeah. Why not look at it really good? It's all up to you because sugar is just sweet salt. We're going to make that a shirt. I love that. <laughs> I, I buy that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So mahalo, everybody, for the Instagram questions. Make sure you leave some for our next guest and maybe your question will make it on the podcast. Okay, so... So got a bunch of stuff to go over. Um, okay, I'm excited. I wanna, I wanna know. Did you ever feel pressure to make anything like local or Hawaiian? Because you know you have a, a brand, and you know when people think of making a starting a business here, like 808, you know, flowers, uh, pineapple, sunshine. We always try to put Hawaii on something, you know. Right. I mean, you have ocean creations. You know, ocean. You know, it's part we're surrounded by it totally but did you ever feel pressure like um, you had to make something like hawaiian you know quote unquote hawaiian yeah. or like if people wouldn't like it i think um i think definitely there's been times where i'm like oh my gosh like i need to do something like a little more you know or less even mm -hmm. um but i try not to think about that too much um i think with opening ala moana there's like a lot of tourists kind of there mm -hmm. so that kind of topic kind of came up recently too like okay are you gonna be selling like pineapple stuff now and like palm trees and like focusing on like those kind of things mm -hmm. but i think i'm just gonna like stay true to myself and you know of course we still have those as options for like the charm bar things like that but um i'm not gonna like make it this whole like touristy thing mm -hmm. just because it's in all moana like yeah. it's still oc and you know we're gonna stay true to ourselves it's worked so far. <laughs> yeah. So right. why, why fix what it ain't broke, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to be yeah. like this tourist company. Just like, say if I opened in like Waikiki or something, mm -hmm. I wouldn't like change. I wouldn't want to anyway mm -hmm. to change like a whole, my whole business just around that. And I don't think I'd have fun doing that. Yeah. 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 I like that. What, what do you think sets Ocean Creations apart from other jewelry brands? Um, I think just the fact that like we are, a trendy kind of like jewelry company and we do actively work on our marketing to be proactive with networking and empowerment and things like that so i think it's more of a brand and less of a jewelry company mm. if that makes sense yeah i mean you you've branded it really well i mean the whole oc baddie yeah. oc it girl you do mm -hmm. these weekly live live streams of showcasing some jewelry with a uh, a guest so you guys right. can check that out every wednesday yeah, um so yeah you you cool. are you are making it into a brand it's not just like i'm i'm wearing jewelry it's like no i'm a baddie <laughs> i'm an oc baddie you know 
Wow. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad it's. I'm confident. <laughs> I'm glad it's translating. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, I think more so focus on like it being a brand, not so much just a jewelry company, and like really focusing on how it makes people feel, mm-hmm. and like that's what branding is about, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. Really love to hear that. Okay, what's one lesson your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? Ooh, uh, my job is in like. Like a jewelry owner? Yeah. Or yeah. a company mm-hmm. owner or an entrepreneur? Mm-hmm. One thing that my job has taught me that I think everyone should know. Um, yeah, we touched on this a little bit, mm-hmm. but I think it is super important to just be true to yourself and know that, you know, you are going to feel, when you are truly true to yourself, you're going to feel so left out at times and you're going to feel like maybe you're making the wrong decisions. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to have all these like thoughts in your head. Like, am I doing something wrong? Am I not liked? You know, all those things. But to really just be true to yourself and it's going to work out if you do it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep comparing yourself or trying to be someone you're not meant to be, you're not going to be happy. You may look mm-hmm. happy. You might look successful. You might act successful. People might mm-hmm. think you're successful, but you're not going to be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think no matter what you do, uh, what your intentions are, if your intentions are pure and you you are true to yourself, you follow your know-how, your gut, your whatever it is that you believe in, you can never be wrong. Right. You know, because even if I did something like, you and I, you know, I had the purest intentions, you know, I just wanted to help out, but you don't like it. Like, I mean, that sucks, but like, I was just, I was just being me. Yeah. And I was just, you know, trying to do something nice for you. Cause there's times where it's like something, something like that has happened. Right. You know, right. people don't take it like you think they're going to take it. But I think as long as you, you're true to yourself, that's totally fine. I don't think you can go wrong. Yeah, totally. And like people, even if you are true to yourself and you make a mistake, like, yes, that happens. People make Mm -hmm. make mistakes. And even if it's not a mistake, someone just took it wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of like what they're going through right now. That's on them. That's not on us. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if they're like sharing with you and you're like, yeah, I won't do that again. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah. You know, that's one thing. But yeah, just really, truly like taking time for yourself to think like, what do I love to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and be yourself. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so at what time of the day do you think you get your best work done? I'm definitely a morning person. Mm. Yeah, so early mornings are good for me. I mean, I ha- I am known to like stay up all night and work too, but I think like the most energy and like creativeness is in the morning. Mm. I'm more of a night guy for my creativity. Oh, really? Yeah, I do a lot of my work at night. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. Yeah, I think I think majority of entrepreneurs stay up late okay yeah um or they have really early mornings like so it's, it's, four it's o'clock. yeah it's yeah. like either like the total opposite end of the spectrum yeah. but it's like at extremes right right it's like you stay up all the way to like five in the morning working <laughs> or you get up at like four in the morning right and start Work your work yeah, yeah exactly yeah so that, that's so interesting yeah i'm a morning person for sure mm. what is your routine what is your daily routine take us through to the day in the life of Haley. Oh, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> different every single day. So, what I are mean, the constants? Okay, the constants. So the constants are: I do try to wake up mm-hmm. like before the sun. I try my best. Mm-hmm. That doesn't always happen, but that's a goal of mine to wake up before the sun, get like some sort of movement in. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a workout. A workout is like an extra gold star, but <laughs> if I just stretch, that is an accomplishment for me. Um, and then. You know, I drink coffee. I try not to drink coffee within the first hour I wake up. I let it, like, I drink coffee right when I start feeling tired. Um, and then I need to decide what store I'm going to go to. So I'm either going to go to Kapolei or Alamoana. So that changes every day, but I do go to the store. Um, and then, like, Alamoana is more, like, talking to customers when I'm there. I'm talking with customers. I'm making custom jewelry on the spot and interacting a lot more. And then if it's Kapole, then I'm doing emails, having meetings, um, making jewelry in the back. So I have an office there, like getting all my payments up to like up to par, um, kind of like back end work. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, do, I am known to like stay super late. So I'll get home at like maybe 10. Oh. And then I will 
probably get to go. <laughs> do, you, do you eat um, at the shop? or um, do you I'll you eat lunch. Home? Yeah, I'll eat lunch at the shop and I'll probably like pick something up on the way home, mm. um, shower, go to sleep, do it again. Wow. Yeah. That's the, that's the life of an entrepreneur. Yeah, definitely. But then the good thing about it is every day isn't like that. Mm-hmm. So I do like schedule, you know, like I'll wake up extra early mm-hmm. if I'm going to have like leave extra early, things like that. Yeah, yeah. But you you do what's necessary. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's how it is. Sometimes, you know, you, you'll have long days. Yeah. But, you know, it's just it's it's necessary at the time. It's not forever. Yeah. At yeah. least that's the hope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like if I was at the office every single day till 10, like. Which I am sometimes, mm-hmm. all the time, but um, yeah, I don't think I'd be really happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, what's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice? Um, I think one of them was um, pass the credit, take the blame. Pass the credit, take the blame. Pass oh, the credit, cool. take the blame. Yeah, and I don't even know who told me that, but someone did. Mm. And um, I love that one. I I like really like to like incorporate it to my daily life. Always pass the credit and take the blame. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's served me really well so far. <laughs> I feel like that's the that's a good value to have as a as a leader. Yeah, you know, because I, I I've seen times maybe it's just in movies or TV shows too. <laughs> or like reality shows i forget like the boss uh, doesn't take the blame or right. they, they try to pass it on to somebody right. else or oh, they try to take the credit for something you know and like the the, the one who did it they're like wait what i i did that yeah you know? that's usually yeah. like the the main like um storyline mm-hmm. yeah like it starts with that and then like stuff happens but yeah i think it's so important i i just think it's important to feel comfortable like like I said, with my purpose too, I want to be like an aid to mm-hmm. people. So like sometimes you're not always the hero or the main character. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're the guide. Mm. Like, and I'm fully comfortable being the guide role. You know, and I think even we're talking about movies, most movies, there's like a hero, there's a main character, and then there's like a guide. Mm-hmm. And I'm totally comfortable being the guide. I don't need all the credit or like to be the face of the show. And it makes me happy when other people have that opportunity. Mm. So basically what you're saying is you don't need to be Dora the Explorer. <laughs> you don't mind being the map. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> there, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you think the the worst advice you ever received was? Uh, I th- <laughs> the, the, that one time somebody did... Uh, Compared me to Dora the Explorer and called me the map <laughs> <laughs> on his podcast. <laughs> okay, besides that one, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think the worst advice someone's ever given me was to smudge the numbers. Smudge the numbers. Or does like, that mean to like kind of like... Like hide your money. Hide, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone does things differently. And I think it's just important to not do that when it comes to things like wanting leasings, you know establishing yourself as like a small business mm-hmm. and like you know getting like even getting positions at all moana and kamakana lii like if i hid my numbers like why i would have nothing to prove to mm-hmm. them you know and even like working with them like i would n- never do that but like they can kick you out you know like mm. things like that so if you do things like that that's sketchy and weird um i just think it's not gonna mm-hmm. be good yeah. yeah, I think that sh- goes to show your your heart and uh, how you stay true to yourself. Yeah. Because you wouldn't feel right yeah. smudging the numbers. Right, right. Yeah. You know, like cash is involved, things like mm-hmm. that with small businesses. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, no, I don't I don't think that's good advice. Yeah. <laughs> so to have a store in Alamana, there's certain requirements? How, no, how does that work? No, oh. there's no requirements or anything. As long like as that. you pay rent. <laughs> yeah, you pay rent and like everyone has different deals and oh, things okay. like that. But um I would just imagine if I was lying, mm-hmm. that won't work out well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no r- real reason, I guess, you need to lie anyways. Yeah. It's the worst, yeah, when people lie for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, point. even with taxes and things like yeah. that, like, I'm I'm not really going to... S- I mean, I'm an accountant, too, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's where it comes from. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah so... I Can you do my taxes? I cannot. Oh, okay, okay. I could, 
but you don't want to. I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. I see. Like, like you said, we have to like have boundaries, right? And <laughs> yeah. Say no. Yeah, that was my no. <laughs> exactly. This is an example. We scripted this. <laughs> yeah, that was that was an example. For you guys. Yeah, so it's, it's okay. It's whatever. I'll find someone else. <laughs> no, I don't even do my own taxes. <laughs> All so, right, yeah. taxes suck. <laughs> okay. If you if you could go back in time and tell eighteen year old Haley anything, what would you say? I would say make good choices, and I don't think I made bad choices, <laughs> but I think every eighteen year old needs to be told that just make good choices mm-hmm. and stay true to yourself. It's gonna be okay. Chill out. Mm-hmm. You don't need to have it all figured out. Just make good choices. Yeah. See, I think the thing is when we tell people like make good choices, do good, blah, blah, blah. People want to know how. People yeah. always want to know, like, okay, how do I do that? Right. You know, like, start a business. Okay, well, how do I do that? They, they kind of want you to just, like, give you the whole b- blueprint. Right. But it's also, but I think it's good to be able to figure it out on your own. Yeah. You know, because you, you learn to. so much in that journey. You know, they said the, what the journey is the destination or the destination is the journey, whatever that, that saying is. Yeah, I know what you're yeah. talking about. So I, I think it is important to... You know, not you don't need to know everything. Yeah. Right. No. You just have have a an idea in mind, have a goal, and just work work towards it. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure if I was 18 and like my older self, like I got to talk to my older self, and she was like, "Do this, then do that, <laughs> then do this, then do that," I'd be like, "Um, mm, no." <laughs> I'm like, "Nah, I'm good." Yeah. <laughs> Even my 18 year old self, yeah. I want to do what I want to do. Yeah. So I think something more like just make good choices. Like mm-hmm. you don't need to do this, but mm-hmm. just whatever you're doing, like do the right yeah. thing. Be a good person, um, yeah, I think would go a long way for 18-year-old Haley. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, that's great advice. Okay, um, so after everything that, that you've done, how do you want to be remembered? <sighs> how do I want to be yeah. remembered? I mean, I guess you, you said, you know, like, I feel like it's like your purpose in life. Right. Like you want to be a light, be in, other a light in other people's lives yeah. and, you know, like add some charm and like... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. lightness to things too mm-hmm. um well what about what about this how what are you most proud of what am i most proud of? oh that's such a good question yeah. um i'm just most proud of where i am today truly mm. and like i think i've gone through so many like barriers to get here and like sometimes i wake up in the like in the morning and i trip out on my life i'm just like wow this is crazy you know like i really even when I'm hanging out with people, they're like, oh, do you have to, like, what do you have to do tomorrow? And I'm like, this, this, and this. But it's not, like, it's, I, I'm literally, like, it's up to me. <laughs> like, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Really, I can. So I think that's such a great feeling. I feel like I'm such, I'm in a good, stable mm-hmm. place right now where I am really proud and happy of myself. So, yeah, I think I'm just happy of how far I've come. And I'm also proud of the fact that I, I, I feel like I did come a long way, but I still consider this the beginning. Mm. So I think I'm proud of that too. Like, it's so exciting. What's what's next? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They say at the top of every mountain is another peak. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think I'm proud of the fact that I'm not satisfied yet. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. cool. Still exciting. hungry. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Awesome. That's, that's super cool. Okay, what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? Hmm. I, I I don't know. I think I think not a lot of people like and how I'm perceived as like, you know, a business owner now and you know, I have employees and my social media and things like that. I don't think people know I'm like really like quirky, kind of dorky. Um <laughs> Yeah, you did something with like fake you and nations whatever. Yeah, yeah. Model United Nations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm kind that, of nerdy. Yeah, that sounds like total nerd. Yeah, nerd. <laughs> nerd <laughs> convention. <laughs> yeah, literally. it sounds like the United Nerd Convention. <laughs> it's pretty much that. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think a lot of people know that about me. I love learning. I love school. Mm-hmm. I love reading. Um like random interesting facts like mm-hmm. really like intrigue me. Um you know, like what people are doing really intrigues me. Mm-hmm, I like mm-hmm. to know like the ins and outs of it, like even to the smallest details mm-hmm. and like little things like that really like, I'm like really curious mm-hmm. about a lot of things. So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. What is your favorite book? Um, or some book recommendations? So Atomic Habits is one I'm Love reading that now. One. Yeah. I think that's a super good one. And I think when I was more so like in the beginning of 
like at the end of high school to college. Um, Girl Boss by Nasty Gal mm, never is that. a good one. I mean, it's kind of like woman focused, mm. but um, it's definitely like a book. It's a super easy read. It's not hard or anything, but it's like the base level, like, st- you know, kind of like that got me on track of like being disciplined. Mm-hmm. Like it really like tells you like stop trying to like you don't need to impress anybody like stop trying to buy out of your budget or Mm. stop trying to like be flashy and just like get the work done Mm. you know so that was kind of the one book that really got me into that mindset nice and those are two oh well atomic habits for sure i'd recommend that to anybody love that book and then the girl boss boss. yeah it's a it's a really easy easy basic read but Mm -hmm. i I like it that's good especially for because not everybody loves reading yeah you know so having those kind of intro books are a little bit better easier yeah. mm-hmm. i'm reading a book now called death on the nile oh wow i think okay. that's what it's called it's it's a like a fiction one um okay. they have a movie about it actually death on the nile yeah so i saw assuming it assuming it's a mystery yeah like this <laughs> uh this um what is it called detective he's on this um cruise and somebody dies and they're trying to figure it out um because i've been i was reading a lot of like atomic habits yeah. uh, books like that so, so i, I, I kind of want i'd like to mix it up so, you know, I don't want to just read one kind of category I want to do. Like, so if I read, like, an Atomic Habits, I'll read, like, a, um, what's it called? Um, oh, it's my, one of my favorite books. Uh, 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 the Alchemist. Oh, The Alchemist. The Alchemist, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Something like that, right. and I go to something else, so I kind of switch it up. Cool. Yeah, I, I, love, think I love The Alchemist. That's a goal of mine. I, I'm really into, like, self-help books only, mm-hmm. and I want to get into, like, maybe a mystery or something. Yeah. Switch it up. It's It gets kind of... Mm, not boring but it's hard those books are a little harder to read for me because the, the, self-help, the, the self-help book <clears throat> because it's basically just knowledge it's like yeah. information it's like do this then this, yeah exactly yeah. whereas like these other ones it's like a story it's yeah. like you know you can you, you visualize it in your head and you're like okay these people are here and like how how do these people look or right. you know the other one is just like okay so how am I going to clean my room tomorrow? It's like, wake up early. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go to the gym. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't want to hear that, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Journal, right. have yeah. a calendar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. All right, so what's your what's your future goals? Um, what, what's next? Like, what, where do you see this um, yourself long-term and ocean creations? Um, I, yeah, I'm excited. I'm just stepping into that kind of like mm-hmm. energy right now. So I'm so excited. I don't really know yet, but I definitely want to get like a warehouse and kind of have like a back end office where mm-hmm. like there's a headquarters, things like that. Um, I'm definitely going to focus on traveling within the next year abroad specifically. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm I'm excited to really figure that out. I don't have all in one was like one of my a big goal for me so like i'm mm-hmm. just recovering from all the craziness <laughs> of that so like the next thing on my mind isn't really super clear i just know it's gonna be big yeah 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 i'm, I'm sure it will with <laughs> what you've already done i'm sure it's gonna be amazing yeah so i'm excited to see what that is yeah i'm excited too i'll, <laughs> I'll be there with my my jewelry my <laughs> h for what is it for today? High expectations. The, wow. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're coming to the end of the podcast. And I got to know before we end, what's your life hack? Okay. My life hack is I literally have so many. So it's hard for me to so think. Share them of. all. Okay. Share yeah, them all. Yeah. We have no <laughs> rules here. We can okay. end now. We can end in two hours. <laughs> You know, I don't think people will still be listening in two hours, but yeah. Like, okay, let me bring out my hundred life hacks. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, but that's the thing with having your own business, having your own job. Like, you make the rules. You don't have to answer to anybody, yeah, right? Totally. If you want to just go or not work today, I mean, you probably won't do that, but you but can. You have the option. Yeah. You know, it's just like for me, if I want to go surf, I'll go surf. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay, for the sake of time, I'll stick to one. Um, Give me two, because it sounds like you have a lot. Okay, we'll do two. So one is kind of broad. I think one life hack is to be kind and like Mm. truly be kind and to the little things of like when you're driving and you make eye contact with someone, smile, Mm -hmm. you know, wave. Um, Yeah, throw up a shaka. Um, If someone's struggling with their bags, offer to help. You know, if someone is like needing a cart and you're grabbing a cart, like give them the cart first. Like little small things, like just be kind, like to mm-hmm. those little daily, daily um, habits. And I think it's important too, like if you don't see yourself doing that on a regular basis, mm-hmm. like make it a goal 
to be like, today I'm going to do one good deed mm. to a stranger. Like opening the door for people, holding the elevator for people, things like that. So I think that has actually got me a really long way, just those little things. Even putting the cart away, you know, like at the right spot, mm -hmm. like just know when you don't put it away, someone else has to do that. Exactly. So like think about how, like just do it. You know, mm -hmm. you're supposed to, you know, yeah, little things like yeah. that. If it's inconvenient for you, it's probably going to be inconvenient for somebody else. Yeah. So why don't you try to help them out? Right. Yeah. Even like at the grocery store, like, you know how you like pack all your stuff in, in your car and then you're like actually i don't really need this oh you just throw it and anywhere. you just throw it anywhere yeah. i've never done that before <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> no i've done it too but i just think like oh okay you too yeah okay yeah, i've done it then yeah. Yeah. i mean i've done it <laughs> not too <laughs> um That's a good i point, though. think yeah like just to be conscious and kind and just know whatever you're doing someone is having to clean up so yeah i love that that's a great one um one of the the cart thing is something that i always keep in mind is I always, because it annoys me when people just people leave it around. Yeah, they always well, do. Because sometimes it, they leave it in the most ridiculous <laughs> spots, like right in front of where somebody's going to park. Right. So I, one of the things, every time I go shopping, I'm like, always put it away. Yes. And that's one of my things. So I love I that love you said that. that. Yeah, like so yeah. small little things. Yeah. I think that's like a life hack. Yeah, okay. But, okay, but for the putting, not putting something that you grab away in the right location. Uh -huh. Another way to look at it is job security. Okay, you're, you're, I knew I had a feeling you're gonna say this. <laughs> you, you you know me already just from speaking with me for the last hour <laughs> half. <laughs> no, but really, right? It's like you're giving. Sometimes people are bored at work; they don't yeah. have anything to do. So then they see that they're like, "Oh, cool! I have something to do to do, and I could put it away." So yeah, maybe yeah. I don't know. Maybe I think. I think grocery workers are, they're busy. I think they're Kay. busy. If you see them, it's kind of hard to tag yeah, one down yeah. when you're like, where's the, where's the ketchup? You kind of, you have to go through aisles. Yeah, they're, yeah. you know, they're working. So. All right. Well, I'll start putting it away then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And cause I, cause I don't care about their job security. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your next life hack? Okay. Another life hack more like, um, uh, like everyday one is I do like to, before I go to bed, I do like to like semi plan my day out the next day like mentally or sometimes like write it down i always have a notebook like mm. i need a notebook with oh, me nice. all you the time it. yeah like i always have a notebook so having like an idea of what i'm going to do the next day and having like at least three things i'm like okay i need to get this done this done and that done so it's like three is like the number for me mm -hmm. is that from atomic habits i think it is yeah because yeah it sounds familiar <laughs> yeah so that's something that's got me really far too just mm -hmm. having an idea and i think like subconsciously too like you go into like your your dreams mm -hmm. <laughs> with an idea of what you're doing the next day yeah, yeah. visualizing it is so important yeah so yeah that's helped me too yes i think one of the things that i took away from the atomic habits is how we i think it was effective over or efficient over effective or what, what was it okay wait. i have it written on my whiteboard it, wait efficient over effective Effective over efficient, or was effective over efficient. Okay, I think it's effective over efficient okay. because because you know how people make these long lists of things to do. Yes, and we never get to everything. It's writing three things and being efficient, um, effective with them instead of being efficient. Because efficient is just, I did this, I did this, I did this, right. I did this, I did this. And some things are not even that important. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but having those three like main things, like okay, I gotta pick up groceries. Mm -hmm. I have to f send these emails. I have to. Uh, create this new design like those three things I'm that's good. effective yeah yes instead of just like sometimes we do things like brush teeth check yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wake up in the morning check drink water check and that's just being you know yeah efficient, efficient and, yeah. right which is good yes. too but yeah at least having like your three main mm -hmm. things like yeah really gonna spin the wheel for like long-term progress yes yes yeah and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's effective over yeah i'm pretty sure if, if guys, not it's just the, this, read the book yeah read the book and let us know <laughs> yeah let us know in the youtube comments or something if we got it right <laughs> okay awesome mahalo for sharing those life hacks okay i have um my last five rapid fire questions oh my gosh and then we're, we're all <laughs> okay pop. let's go okay favorite jewelry piece mm, the boss choker what is that it's a choker with a tahitian pearl in the middle Ooh. one of my first pieces and Boss sugar, you feel like a boss wearing Nice. It. Oh, yeah. that's why boss sugar. It's a standard. Everyone needs that. Piece. Okay. 
Well, I need to get one then. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you and a b o d sugar, yeah, that would make my day. Well, I think when we recorded the um, the video at the Kamo Kanali location, this the one I'm wearing, um, it was too small, so it basically looked like a choker <laughs> like this. I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, <laughs> but you you added the um, this the like extender, yeah. yeah. So that's why it's a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, favorite food spot. Ooh, um. My go-to food spot. Oh my god, rapid fire. Mm, I go to Whole Foods a lot. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you get? I get like the hot menu. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they That's been my go-to lately. I don't necessarily think I love it though. Now that I'm thinking <laughs> about it, convenient. I'm like, it's just convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I go to Whole Foods a lot. Um, my favorite, I like like boiling crab. Oh, I haven't been there. Or like, I see Diogo go there. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> him, him and Jordan. That's like one of my favorite <laughs> spots is like seafood crab places. So yeah. Okay, I haven't been there. My really ever? You've never put like the bib on with the no, gloves? No, no. We oh I was just God. talking about this with my girlfriend like a couple weeks ago. Go because she wants to go. I'm just like. Has she gone before? I think she. I don't know if that specific location, but okay, something but similar like to that. Yeah. But I'm, to me, it's just like that's all you're gonna eat. Mm. Like I want some rice and yeah. you know some like other stuff, but. It, I feel like it's more of a like a special occasion thing, mm -hmm. or like I don't know. You tell me, is it like what's well, so good about it? It's a special occasion yeah. thing for sure, but it's Alaskan crab legs. Like, and but then the all you're eating is crab. Yeah, well, you can get rice and like potatoes. And, okay, like, so there's corn. sides. Yeah, there's sides, and then there's okay. like appetizers too that you can get. Okay, you can okay. even get like just chicken nuggets. I think. Okay. Like you can let her have the crab. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just being a hater. Uh, yeah, you should try yeah. it. Just try at least once. Right? Okay, I'll go and uh, I'll let you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, favorite night activity. Mm, night activity. I mean, I do love a good time going out with friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can catch me at Moani's on Friday yeah. with Cowie. <laughs> yeah, so I do. I do enjoy a nice drink and a night out every awesome. so often. Cool, cool. Do you like dancing? All that stuff? I do like dancing. No, no, I don't actually. Oh. <laughs> I'm a horrible dancer. I mean, I I think it's fun sometimes, but yeah, yeah. I just like to be with friends and like mm -hmm. I think when you go out, you get to see like a big group of friends, mm -hmm. um, which is I don't get to see a lot. So. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, favorite concert you've been to? Oh, favorite concert? I don't know. Oh my gosh, I went to Celine Dion. Oh no way! Yeah, that no where? Um, in Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was that's amazing. a huge one. I went with my grandparents. Um, yeah, so love that concert. <laughs> right on. Favorite travel destination. Favorite. Um, I think the most impactful and slash favorite was India. Mm -hmm. I think that was such a culture shock and like just so cool and different. I think it opened my eyes up to like the possibilities of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was. India. Yeah, just to see how other people are living. Right? Yeah, like completely different, and and you can relate, mm, right? Definitely, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, that that's all I have. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, just thank you so much for having me on. This was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, well, all of her coming. I'm glad it it worked out, and we got it at the perfect time. Perfect timing. Yeah. How lucky. <laughs> yes, how lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. What a great way to end it. So, where can we find you? What are your your socials? So, my personal is Hill Hill, and then Ocean Creations is at Ocean Creations, um, and Ocean Creations Hawaii dot com. Mm -hmm. We're also at Kamakana Lee Shopping Center and Ala Moana. So. Yeah. Make Come sure you check, us out. check them out. Get get uh, something for your girlfriend, your wife, maybe somebody you're trying to impress. Get something for yourself. Guys can wear jewelry as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody can can buy it. There's no so, rules nowadays. There's no rules exactly. <laughs> All right, so keep doing what you do, and uh, I'm excited to see what, how far you'll take it. Thank you. It's gonna be awesome. I so, appreciate that. Yes, no problem. Mahalo Haley for joining us on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Check us out on HawaiiVerse.com, the best place to support local. Spread aloha, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. New episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host Kamaka, and you'll hear me next time on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Ahui ho. Mm -hmm.